Ezekiel chapter 38 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Prophesy against him and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your whole army, your horses, your horsemen fully armed, and a great horde with large and small shields, all of them brandishing their swords. Persia, Cush, and Pat will be with them, all with shields and helmets. Also Goma with all its troops, and Beth Togama from the far north with all its troops, the many nations with you. Get ready. Be prepared, you and all the hordes gathered about you, and take command of them. After many days you will be called to arms. In future years you will invade a land that has recovered from war, whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They have been brought out from the nations, and now all of them live in safety. You and all your troops and the many nations with you will go up, advancing like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On that day, thoughts will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil scheme. You will say, I will invade a land of unwalled villages. I will attack a peaceful and unsuspecting people, all of them living without walls and without gates and bars. I will plunder and loot and turn my hand against the resettled ruins and the people gathered from the nations, rich in livestock and goods, living at the center of the land. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish and all her villages will say to you, have you come to plunder? Have you gathered your hordes to loot, to carry off silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, and to seize much plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, In that day, when my people Israel are living in safety, will you not take notice of it? You will come from your place in the far north, you and many nations with you, all of them riding on horses, a great horde, a mighty army. You will advance against my people Israel like a cloud that covers the land. In days to come, Gog, I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You are the one I spoke of in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel. At that time, they prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. This is what will happen in that day. When Gog attacks the land of Israel, my hot anger will be aroused, declares the Sovereign Lord. In my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare that at that time, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the beasts of the field, every creature that moves along the ground, and all the people on the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. The mountains will be overturned, the cliffs will crumble, and every wall will fall to the ground. I will summon a sword against Gog on all my mountains declares the Sovereign Lord. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment on him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstones and burning sulphur on him and on his troops and on the many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness, and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 39 Son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. 
I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around and drag you along. I will bring you from the far north and send you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. On the mountains of Israel you will fall, you and all your troops and the nations with you. I will give you as food to all kinds of carrion birds and to the wild animals. You will fall in the open field, for I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in safety in the coastlands, and they will know that I am the Lord. I will make known my holy name among my people Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profaned, and the nations will know that I, the Lord, am the Holy One in Israel. It is coming. It will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is the day I have spoken of. Then those who live in the towns of Israel will go out and use the weapons for fuel and burn them up. The small and large shields, the bows and arrows, the war clubs and spears. For seven years they will use them for fuel. They will not need to gather wood from the fields or cut it from the forests, because they will use the weapons for fuel. And they will plunder those who plundered them and loot those who looted them, declares the Sovereign Lord. On that day I will give Gog a burial place in Israel in the valley of those who travel east of the sea. It will block the way of travelers, because Gog and all his hordes will be buried there. So it will be called the Valley of Haman Gog. For seven months the Israelites will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them, and the day I display my glory will be a memorable day for them, declares the Sovereign Lord. People will be continually employed in cleansing the land. They will spread out across the land, and along with others, they will bury any bodies that are lying on the ground. After the seven months, they will carry out a more detailed search. As they go through the land, anyone who sees a human bone will leave a marker beside it until the gravediggers bury it in the valley of Hamon Gog near a town called Hamona, and so they will cleanse the land. Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Call out to every kind of bird and all the wild animals. Assemble and come together from all around to the sacrifice I am preparing for you, the great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. There you will eat flesh and drink blood, you will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, as if they were rams and lambs, goats and bulls, all of them fattened animals from Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing for you, you will eat fat till you are glutted and drink blood till you are drunk. At my table you will eat your fill of horses and riders, mighty men and soldiers of every kind declares the Sovereign Lord. I will display my glory among the nations, and all the nations will see the punishment I inflict and the hand I lay on them. From that day forward, the people of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God, and the nations will know that the people of Israel went into exile for their sin because they were unfaithful to me. So I hid my face from them, and handed them over to their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their offenses, and I hid my face from them. Therefore this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will now restore the fortunes of Jacob, and will have compassion on all the people of Israel, and I will be zealous for my holy name. They will forget their shame and all the unfaithfulness they showed towards me when they lived in safety in their land with no one to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the nations and have gathered them from the countries of their enemies, I will be proved holy through them, 
in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. For though I sent them into exile among the nations, I will gather them to their own land, not leaving any behind. I will no longer hide my face from them, for I will pour out my Spirit on the people of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord. Ezekiel chapter 40 In the twenty-fifth year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the tenth of the month, in the fourteenth year after the fall of the city, on that very day, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he took me there. In visions of God, he took me to the land of Israel and set me on a very high mountain, on whose south side were some buildings that looked like a city. He took me there, and I saw a man whose appearance was like bronze. He was standing in the gateway with a linen cord and measuring rod in his hand. The man said to me, Son of man, Look carefully and listen closely and pay attention to everything I am going to show you, for that is why you have been brought here. Tell the people of Israel everything you see. I saw a wall completely surrounding the temple area. The length of the measuring rod in the man's hand was six long cubits, each of which was a cubit and a hand breadth. He measured the wall. It was one measuring rod thick and one rod high. Then he went to the east gate. He climbed its steps and measured the threshold of the gate. It was one rod deep. The alcoves for the guards were one rod long and one rod wide, and the projecting walls between the alcoves were five cubits thick, and the threshold of the gate next to the portico facing the temple was one rod deep. Then he measured the portico of the gateway. It was eight cubits deep, and its jams were two cubits thick. The portico of the gateway faced the temple. Inside the east gate were three alcoves on each side. The three had the same measurements, and the faces of the projecting walls on each side had the same measurements. Then he measured the width of the entrance of the gateway. It was ten cubits and its length was thirteen cubits. In front of each alcove was a wall one cubit high, and the alcoves were six cubits square. Then he measured the gateway from the top of the rear wall of one alcove to the top of the opposite one. The distance was twenty-five cubits from one parapet opening to the opposite one. He measured along the faces of the projecting walls all around the inside of the gateway sixty cubits. The measurement was up to the portico facing the courtyard. The distance from the entrance of the gateway to the far end of its portico was fifty cubits. The alcoves and the projecting walls inside the gateway were surmounted by narrow parapet openings all round, as was the portico. The openings all round faced inward. The faces of the projecting walls were decorated with palm trees. Then he brought me into the outer court. There I saw some rooms and a pavement that had been constructed all round the court. There were thirty rooms along the pavement. It abutted the sides of the gateways and was as wide as they were long. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the distance from the inside of the lower gateway to the outside of the inner court. It was a hundred cubits on the east side as well as on the north. Then he measured the length and width of the north gate leading into the outer court. Its alcoves, three on each side, its projecting walls and its portico had the same measurements as those of the first gateway. It was fifty cubits long and twenty-five cubits wide. Its openings, its portico and its palm tree decorations had the same measurements as those of the gate facing east. Seven steps led up to it with its portico opposite them. There was a gate to the inner court facing the north gate, just as there was on the east. He measured from one gate to the opposite one. It was a hundred cubits. Then he led me to the south side, and I saw the south gate. 
he measured its jams and its portico, and they had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had narrow openings all round, like the openings of the others. It was fifty cubits long and twenty-five cubits wide. Seven steps led up to it, with its portico opposite them. It had palm-tree decorations on the faces of the projecting walls on each side. The inner courts also had a gate facing south, and he measured from this gate to the outer gate on the south side. It was a hundred cubits. Then he brought me into the inner court, through the south gate, and he measured the south gate. It had the same measurements as the others. Its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all round. It was fifty cubits long and twenty-five cubits wide. The porticos of the gateways around the inner court were twenty-five cubits wide and five cubits deep. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated its jams, and eight steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the inner court on the east side, and he measured the gateway. It had the same measurements as the others. Its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all round. It was fifty cubits long and twenty-five cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated the jams on either side, and eight steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the north gate and measured it. It had the same measurements as the others, as did its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico, and it had openings all round. It was fifty cubits long and twenty-five cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated the jams on either side, and eight steps led up to it. A room with a doorway was by the portico in each of the inner gateways, where the burnt offerings were washed. In the portico of the gateway were two tables on each side, on which the burnt offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings were slaughtered. By the outside wall of the portico of the gateway, near the steps at the entrance of the north gateway, were two tables, and on the other side of the steps were two tables. So there were four tables on one side of the gateway and four on the other, eight tables in all, on which the sacrifices were slaughtered. There were also four tables of dressed stone for the burnt offerings, each a cubit and a half long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit high. On them were placed the utensils for slaughtering the burnt offerings and the other sacrifices, and double-pronged hooks, each a handbreadth long, were attached to the wall all round. The tables were for the flesh of the offerings. Outside the inner gate, within the inner court, were two rooms, one at the side of the north gate facing south, and another at the side of the south gate and facing north. He said to me, The room facing south is for the priests who guard the temple, and the room facing north is for the priests who guard the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, who are the only Levites who may draw near to the Lord to minister before him. Then he measured the court. It was square, a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits wide, and the altar was in front of the temple. He brought me to the portico of the temple and measured the jams of the portico. They were five cubits wide on either side. The width of the entrance was fourteen cubits, and its projecting walls were three cubits wide on either side. The portico was twenty cubits wide, and twelve cubits from front to back. It was reached by a flight of stairs, and there were pillars on each side of the jams. To John The Elder To the Lady Chosen by God and to Her Children, Whom I Love in the Truth, And Not I Only, But Also All Who Know the Truth because of the truth which lives in us and will be with us for ever. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son 
will be with us in truth and love. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I am not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. I say this because many deceivers, who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face, so that our joy may be complete. The children of your sister who is chosen by God send their greetings. Psalm 122 I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Proverbs chapter 9 Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, Come, eat my food and drink the wine I've mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house, on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, Stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. <laughs>